what have we here on this rainy Wednesday afternoon? If it is not, a new expansion coming to Gwent. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's some stuff to talk about. We haven't we haven't chat we haven't had a little chat in a while, so let's talk about things. First of all, welcome back. Gwent Open was awesome. I really enjoyed myself. It was very different. Um, I felt like day two is amazing. I don't think anybody can complain about day two. Really great games, really great results. Demarcation played very well. Deserved the win. Awesome. It was just an awesome day of tournament. Uh, the first day was a little rough. And uh, and there was uh, it was different for me because usually I'm powered I'm powered by uh, an emotion that I can only describe as I'm here I'm here I'm here I'm here I'm actually here and I'm because I'm in the CD Projekt Red Studios and you would think maybe especially like from people that are maybe more professional than I am as someone who has been to CD Projekt Red Studios the amount of times that I've been to that it would be kind of like all right, let's do this. Business as usual. You know, but it's still like, it's still a little bit of I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. So I had to go in without that, but uh, it was still hype. It was still hype, dudes. Had a great time. New season, new meta MCB, Quaker MCB horn. My boy Darnak, 1888. He was born so long ago, but he still knows how to use Twitch. I don't understand. It's amazing. I have some stuff to talk about. I mean, we have, first of all, the new season is here. Welcome to the Season of Magic. Once per turn, when you play a special card, spawn and play a copy of it after. That is the same, right? It is the same? I'm pretty sure. Uh, the Season of Love bundle. Yes, covering everybody who wasn't active last February, which was me, actually. All right, where's the meat? Yeah, yeah, the Overgrown bundle. I got mine. I got mine. Support went eSports. What's going on? Z, huge, 510. Master Mirror Hype, MCB Horn, MCB Horn. Thanks so much for the resub, my friend. Commandos! Support your Gwent Esports. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for the support on Gwent Esports. I'm surprised that there were no balance. Uh, but I guess we're just playing good old stuff. Some good old stuff. We're going to be playing some... Uh, we're just going to be playing some of the same... I don't have to remake any of my decks, I guess. That's good. I mean, you like to see a little bit of stuff to change, like even like a, even like one new thing, like when the crones changed, that was kind of out there. But first of all, that change was dope. I wanted more to change last season. For some reason, I'm like more okay with the fact that nothing changed this season, but I don't know why. I wish I could tell you why. We got ourselves a 70 card expansion coming in themed after Gaunter Odim himself and his role in the continent's history. So some new hot Gaunter lore with 11 neutral cards. Okay, so this is cool because what I liked about Merchants was the neutral cards that were added were all very specific, fairly playable. I mean, like Ophiri Merchant was like Mimi, but at least it was Mimi and not just like some unplayable thing. And I guess Caravan Guard, not Caravan Vanguard. Caravan Guard. That card seemed a little underpowered and still does. But like everything else kind of saw play here and there. Memes or not. I don't know. It's great. So when there's not very many neutral cards, it means that there's more faction cards. And it also means that they can focus on the quality of the neutral cards. I mean, we're going to watch that YouTube video as well. We're going to watch the dev video that was premiered today at 7 o'clock in the morning. I just woke up. So now that my day has started, I started my day with a hearty breakfast of a cupcake. I have had a lunch of a leftover burrito. I truly am so, I'm in great shape, dudes. Let's hit that pipe, Gaunter, hit that pipe. Okay, cool. That is a pretty dope card back, actually. Okay. Master Mirror. It's a brand new gold neutral card being added in the Master Mirror expansion. So this is the keynote. What, sorry, the key art. What is it? Yeah, the key art. The key character. The keystone card. The dude on the website. He's right here. Gontaro Dim. Veil. 
What's Veil? We already got a new keyword. Veil is a status that prevents this unit from gaining other statuses or stati, depending on which one is a word. So this uh, card can't be poisoned, can't be locked, can't be bled, you know? So that is that about this card. So this card needs to be removed. I mean, it has a persistent ability and a deployability, it appears. It has to be removed for it to stop working. Cool. So that's that's tough because it's out of it's out of Alzer's range. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff to deal six damage, but good to know. Good to know. All right, deploy. Transform the leftmost card in your hand. So this is the card. Yeah, the leftmost card in your hand. So this is the card that is furthest away from where you draw into a random legendary card from your faction that was not in your starting deck. Repeat this ability whenever you play the rightmost card from your hand. So what I'm understanding is Master Mirror hits the board, boom, six points for 10. I'm sad, but maybe the ability makes up for it. Well, it just turned my Radovid's Royal Guard into Falibor. Holy shit, that's awesome. All right. So I'm going to play Falibor, which wasn't even in my deck to begin with. So I'm basically getting Falibor value from a 4P. That's awesome. Master Mirror stays on the board. Okay. So now I'm going to play the, the next rightmost card from my hand, which is just whatever it is. So I'm maybe I'm getting good value. Whenever I do this, maybe it's going to transform. Oh, it's going to transform a Carabalista into Kira Metz. Oh, that's amazing. You know, like that's how it will go in a perfect world. Kira Metz is probably more likely to not be in your deck. Not saying that she's not good, but she's just more likely than Falibor, who's in everybody's deck, you know? But I, I, I'm saying that that is how you would want it to go. How often will it go like that? Well, if he's removed, it won't. But the cool thing about this is that you're never relying on it to work. Everything he gives you is just pure value if he's hitting like your shitty bronzes. So that alone is quite interesting. Transform what could be the worst card into your in your hand into Kira Metz. And let's use Kira Metz as a baseline, as a card that you could play, but you wouldn't always play. That would be a good thing to have instead of a Sintran Enchantress. You know what I'm trying to say? So that alone makes me feel like the power level is on par with, I guess, a card that allows you to discard a card and draw a really good card, but still not as good because it doesn't actually thin your deck at all. I suppose it allows you to always have one extra bad card in the deck, which you could say would justify his cost. Because when you put him in, instead of, like, you could just put Kira in the deck, right? That's probably the argument. But if you put in a bunch of, if you put in extra four point four provision cards with the intention of getting this to proc, like, at least twice, you know what I'm getting at? So I think that this card is random enough that it probably won't be competitive, but actually on paper provides enough that it actually could be a consideration for some decks that want to run a lot of four point cards like Syndicate, maybe a bunch of Jackals and Urchins, and maybe you don't need them all. You transform a Jackal into a, you know, a Philip or a Tin Boy. Like that's like got to be... I mean, you're obviously not going to hit that, but the legendary pool of cards you're not running, it just isn't that big. It just isn't that big. You're probably, if you can proc it twice, the odds of you getting something that's pretty damn good is probably pretty high. I want to do the math on it. I usually do stuff like that, but I kind of want to do the math on this card because this card has, I think on paper, it's like meme dream, but I don't think... The I think the utility of this card is actually not laughable. You know what I'm saying? I actually don't know what anybody thinks about this card. People could be all over the place like OP OP. Let's say that the cards represented here are the least likely cards to see because you are more likely to actually have them in your deck. And if you don't have them in your deck, you probably still won't see them that often because it will be against this pool of cards that you see before you. So... 
of these cards, which of these is absolutely awful? Like, holy shit, I'm really sad that I got this card. I can't use it at all. I wish I didn't get this card. Even though Gaunter kind of protects you from this because you will still get to change this card. So, like, as long as it's in that position in your hand, it's the card that keeps rotating. So even if you get a card you don't need or want... That means you can just rotate it that much earlier. Otherwise, you play the card and then transform the next card by playing left, right, left, right. So you kind of need to go for like a pure Northern Realms value deck where every card is just sort of as tempo-y as it can be and just try to play the value game. I think that's probably how that looks. But what you are likely to see is something like, okay, like if you get Siege, you can likely leverage it. If you get War Elephant, you know, it's eight points with the potential of probably being, on average, if it has to hit something that you just really don't have anything ready for, let's say it has to hit, like, I don't know, a three or something that's on your board. So, like, it's, like, nine or ten at worst. At worst, it's, like, nine or ten. Um, Roach Merciless is, you know, he's eight points, ten points, potentially. He's ten points, right, if he kills something. So, and you could potentially be running... Maybe you'd want to run a deck that would avoid pulling this from Gaunter because you'd be running it in your deck instead. Like maybe because you'd want to remove this from the pool because this would always be good and always be your reliable win condition. Now, if you saw Vernon, this would, you could choose whether or not to play it, but there's some situations where you'd be pretty happy to play this. Donmir, probably always play it, uh, likely especially Northern Realms. Profit, I mean, watch there just like, let's just, I'm just, I'm just thinking of potential bugs, but like, let's just say there's a bug where this isn't part of the pool because it's also a syndicate card. Let's just say you might let's say let's say you won't see this because of a potential bug. I'm calling the first bug, but you know it's still probably not that bad if, if you're playing any engines at all. Shawnee is also probably not that bad, but probably not very useful useful if you can't give her any charges at all. So you'd probably re-roll her if you weren't playing a charge based deck at all. Same with Priscilla, and likely. I mean, no, Vizo is great, but likely you'd reroll Dandelion as well. So you got three bad picks there. Kian's not bad if you're just looking at points. You're just looking at upgrading a 4P card. So in a lot of cases, this is like seven points. This is like whatever. So Shiny's not even the worst thing in the world. If it's like a if if you're in a situation where you're where Gaunter is helping you in round three, where you've drawn like two bad cards in Gaunter. So it's like, whoa, Shiny's better than nothing, right? Uh, Kian's also better than nothing because he is at least eight, I think, if you uh, if you turn him around for everything. Uh, Vandergrift would be interesting in the certain rounds, and King Ragnar depends on what you're playing, but there are situations where you might actually get a decent amount of points from this. And Vizagota and Natalis, I mean, let's say this expansion also has like some decent warfare, and you are running Natalis, so that's good, right? So you might be running it and not getting it. But I think that for the most part, I mean, these cards are far better than... I think that the odds of it being better than Radovid's Royal Guard are good enough that I'd consider it. I'd consider it, and I wouldn't think that it would be a fool's errand. So another thing about this card that is interesting, let's say there is a world where you might want to make this competitively viable. How could it be? Well, your opponent, especially in tournaments where there are open deck lists, your opponent can't necessarily play around what they don't know in this situation. While create has very much always been in the game, this could create some situations where your opponent is playing into something that they really don't want to, and you can't really play around everything that a faction can offer. And in tournaments, you know the deck list. So I'm just thinking that there actually could be some very strategic value around this, depending on which card. I got to look at the pool for every faction. Northern Realms, I saw some people in the chat. Who in the chat said, uh, yeah, deep deep shit here. What's up, deep shit? How you doing? Says he doesn't like this pool at all. So, I mean, I think that that pool is passable. Given that Master Mirror is hard enough to remove that you pro... Like, you can trigger it. You have to pick a certain point in the game to trigger it. If you can trigger it twice, you're probably, like, playing with gas. And if you have the right card lineup and you can make it happen... That's why it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to look at the most... I mean, the probably the deck that can make this work is probably not even ultimately. It'll be awesome, but ultimately pe people will probably think it's not interesting because the best deck that can make this work is a deck that's just going for like the biggest point plays every turn. So it's going to be point slammy, trying to convert 
less points into a ton more points and fool the opponent. So, so it's a very interesting. Do we do we have any other examples other than Master Mirror lined up for? Vail? We actually do. We have Ooh, hey. the Spoon Lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to call her, uh, the official the Spoon Lady. It's the Lady of the Lake of this expansion, right? It's like the same thing. Instead of having shield, it's Veil. Now, I always thought that this character would be a monsters card. If monsters and Nilfgaard, like if they ever, if they ever wanted to go forward with dual faction, I thought that this would have been a prime example of a monsters Nilfgaard card. What a perfect monsters Nilfgaard card this character would have been. Where Lady of the Lake protected against everything except for Joust, uh, this will protect against poison specifically, and also can be poisoned. So she's a good frontliner against poison. What's happening? Oblivious. What's happening right now? Video is stuck. Oh, God. Now, I recorded, like, a whole thing. Well, it was just Marlene to trust Mara. It's okay. I can I can, I can, can fix this in post. I'll fix it in post. There you go. Marlene to trust Mara. That's the artwork. We'll move on to the next thing here. Right. So you just killed it. So it's important to remove a status after you kill something. Um, <laughs> always, always keep your bodies clean. No. Um, so this will be, like, a, a next turn kill status if you will that needs to either be purified or well yeah purified or die uh, <laughs> it's pretty pretty nasty it's like a poison uh, that it reapplies itself status and, and there's another keyword for, for skellige that we have in this expansion right Which is veteran hey! only but a goodie veteran uh, boosts the base strength of a unit at the veteran start of each round back. so at the start of round three you have plus two base strength we haven't played with base strength since we launched homecoming if i'm not mistaken yeah it's been a long time tirig v twirsark so twirsark twirsark yeah so that's a yeah that's a good one that's a good one for casting for sure so this guy uh has veteran as a keyword so his strength increases each round by one base strength nothing can ever reduce it again in the history of time forever because there is no weekend right so you play him on round three he's seven if you resurrect him from the graveyard in round three he's seven right and he gives an enemy unit rupture which is something that needs to be played around for sure because it is basically like poison and then poison again this guy is very similar to morale in that he gives the opponent the oper well he's worse than morale that's the thing about this guy but he is seven points and he's a skellige card so he's going to come back so he's worse than morale in the sense that morale needs to be killed or the poison needs to be purified or the thing's going to die anyway here the purify is all you need but you may have to deal with him twice. So it's kind of the same thing. And he's quite strong when you play him the second time, if you're playing him a second time. So I think that that's very interesting. He, it is pretty weak to purify. So I think that it is, I think that so far the meta has dictated that purify is necessary in a lot of cases. And Skellige has benefited from usually just not having that much worth purifying except for some bleeds. And now they have something worth purifying. So I don't think you should fall in love with this card if purify is going to still be a thing. Also, since Veil is a thing, it's probably less likely that you'll even be able to use this card on anything worthwhile. I would think that a status-based card in a status-denying set, there is a, there is, it's worrying. But, and also Jason says up front that this is the only card that has this. So you can't uh, reapply Rupture outside of replaying Tirigvi. So there you go. So is he good? Is he bad? I don't know. I think that his cost is quite high. You're encouraged to play him twice. You're just very, very much encouraged to play him twice. And that's probably going to be good. You can't purify everything, but you're less likely to have anything worthwhile to purify with Skellige. So we will see. We will see. We will see. All right. So Echo. So we're talking about Echo and Oniromancy. So we have a 12 provision neutral card that plays any card from your deck. Not just any spell, not just any artifact, not just any unit, any card. And then in round two or three, you can do this again at no cost. I have a hard time finding much to say about this card outside of the fact that it is expensive, but given that you are getting 
two tutors, it means that you are more consistent than ever. So this card's probably really good, right? This card has got to be good. This card allows a level of consistency that Skellige usually only knows for the most part. And I think that this card might be amazing for monsters for for a couple more points. Not like monsters have a lot of breathing room right now for their competitive options. But if you really need a consistency, you can get it with this card. But boy, is it expensive. Play any card from your deck this round and next round. That's crazy good. That's got to be good. The price could keep it in check, though. That is a huge amount of provisions. Tw 12 is, like, super high. Can't put neutrals in your deck if you want this devotion. Mm. Okay. No neutral cards here. Okay. Like, good, right? Good. Like, this is really interesting. First of all, basically, any card that they add, I think, to Squiatel that has devotion on it, it might as well just be a Squiatel with that ability on it. But outside of that... This has this has large ramifications. Look at Northern Realms. Northern Realms is currently running a Peller for their best Purify option. So now a Devotion deck can't run Peller. And you know what else a Devotion deck can't run? Lots of neutral tech, Bomb Heaver, etc. So this means that so they've shown they've shown all except for except for the Skellige card, all neutral cards, and now they're saying that there's going to be a lot of cards in this expansion that you just maybe won't even want to use these really strong, really cool cards because of de devotion. So this is really interesting. I'll use devotion cards. I think this is, might be a keyword we play with more in time mm -hmm. uh, because you're 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 restricting yourself out of all those let's say neutral tech options. Oh yeah. So oak critters, hungry for some, you know. I know there's a lot of people out there in the world that like chicken fingers. This dude likes human fingers, so look out. Reparations for the forest. Oak critters. So awesome. Squatel, new Squatel card with some pretty cool art. Four provisions for a two strength treant. So having a bronze treant, there isn't one, right? Now there is. So this makes Nature Rebuke a very much improved Alzheimer's Thunder if you wanted to ever use this for whatever reason, but gives bleeding spawns two of them and if you're running a squatel deck of any kind you're probably not running a lot of neutrals so that means that he's a seven point a seven point a four provision seven point card that likely will trigger trigger harmony and be the recipient of nature's rebuke very very high value card that does not disrupt Isengrim's Council, which is something that I like specifically about this card. This card is probably going to see play. Uh, just in today's meta, I think that you might consider running this. Because Squiatel, like I said, not running a lot of neutral cards because Squiatel cards are generally all working together. So I feel like this card is very playable. Only Mahaka Marauder would look at this like, I don't know, maybe I can do better, but only if the bonded ability goes off, this guy gets it done every time. I think this card's quite good. Look out. This card's good. Straight up. That is true. This doesn't have harmony itself, so you'd want to actually develop the engines first. It doesn't take away from the fact that it represents a card that you could play late in round one at four provisions that can actually provide you with a ton of benefit. And I think that is part of its appeal. And the fact that without any Harmony proc, it is still representing seven points in most situations, which is pretty good for four for four provisions, especially for Squiatel, which doesn't tend to see that because of how good Harmony is right now. So I think that, um, yeah, seven is pretty high, I think, for Squiatel's four provisions. Yes, next up we have Conspiracy. Trigger this ability if target unit has spying. Oh shit! Does that mean we have a lot of new spying in the game? I don't know. I'm asking questions this way. Yes, it absolutely means. Yes. <laughs> wow. Nilgard will have a lot of new uh, spying cards in. Well then, hey Nilfgaard fans, you're gonna get a lot of new spying cards. Not one, not two, not a rework of an old card into something that might support spies. You are getting quite a few. 
you're getting so many, you're getting a keyword that supports spies. So holy shit, dudes, this is the age of Nilfgaard spies. I hope for the Nilfgaard fans out there that they do it right for you. So you look at a card like Angry Mob and you look at a card like Emissary or, or, or Duchess Informant or whatever, Roderick and such. And it just now, and then if there's more that supports spies, we're just looking at what likely is a core card. It either gets the points and it's a core card or it isn't. But at four provisions, it probably could be, um, depending on how good the other cards. But if this is like a supporting arc, if this is a, an archetype support card at four P, the value seems there. So I imagine that this is probably very good. I mean, it looks like seven points at 4P where the tortoise is looking like a, maybe seven points at 5P used a lot. Because it's a soldier, generally, the trade-off is good with the armor. I think that this is this this does look like this is probably even playable at two. No, I don't know. I don't know if I'd play it at two. At two, it just seems like Sinter Knight. This is actually, uh, the, the, the body on this is probably competitive the power of one here probably good enough right okay so if you have two symbiosis units and you play nature's rebuke you get a two point treant wandering treant so it rewards spell casting but these are the units that support you need to have them on the board first so you set up with these cards and then you start taking over the board with your nature spells so will the setup have the tempo to compete? That's the question. I think that a lot of archetypes have lived and died by the setup tempo that is able to uh, roll out. Like, can you protect your engines? Can you protect all that stuff? Like, I think Dem Event's a good example. Okay, so that's a new token, right? The Wandering Triant? Yeah. Actually, I think I'll just straight up show it. Wandering hey. Triant. Duped. Okay, so there you go. One power. So that's what's going to be. That's pretty clear. Um, cool artwork, though. Fucking awesome. And it is doomed. Yep. And, and I think we have another card, which is actually a token to kind of bring up really quick uh, and reveal that works as an example of symbiosis, which is the young dryad. Dryad, exactly. Doomed symbiosis. Uh, doomed power. symbiosis. Pick it up. Two power. It's a token. It'll be spawned by other things. Okay, so it'll be spawned by other things. Okay, so that means that being able to swarm the board with this bratty looking dryad who's like, I'm eating an apple. Can you? F I'm busy, is what it looks like. So if you can spawn, if you can swarm with symbiosis, that definitely makes it more viable, right? That definitely makes it more viable. Oh, wow. Okay. Squirrel is arbalest. It just, you know, I mean, it just ends up being kind of an arbalest for, for. It's not Squirtle. It's neutral. This is neutral. Saw so during uh, last weekend's Gwent Open number one of season yeah. two. Neutral graveyard. Was it now... a tough day, wasn't it? The... Wow, this is massive. We made it through. It's yeah. massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and yeah, this makes this makes Echo very, very, very easy to tech against, right? You just pop this baby in, and it just. Just zap it. It just seems like it's probably like it's pretty low risk. Nilfgaard's been doing it for a while. That's like huge, right? So you have, you have status blockers and you've got a neutral graveyard hater. I actually don't think that double ball is going to get nerfed, dudes. I think that these are the nerfs. I think you're seeing the nerfs right now. So if I just uh, go to card reveal. So we already have stuff here. So here's everything. This is the whole thing right here. So it's in a it's in an interesting order. Now, is there anything here that we haven't seen yet? I imagine that they only had the stuff from today's video lined up for today. But here's all the stuff. Oh, baby. 